video and then you are making me look so pale how are you tan <laughs> I actually went for a hike today and I feel like I'm a little bit sunburned oh I haven't gotten this looking sun. good I haven't gotten sun for a long time but I'm feeling a little bit sunburned <laughs> it's uh it was like the first time my face has seen sun in so long <laughs> All right. Well, it why sounds, don't we start off? It sounds like your audio is a little skipping a little bit for me. I'm not sure if it's my headphones or. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me know if it keeps happening. Um, why don't you start off by saying your name and what your business is, and then we can go from there. Okay, wait, hold on. It definitely keeps on doing it, so. Oh. I just want to make sure that <laughs> it's just my headphones, so. You actually sound more clear now. I don't know if something happened, but. Okay, wait, keep talking. You sound more clear now. Okay, well, oh. that's good. Maybe. I'm glad that I sound more clear. Um, <laughs> You know, I just don't want you to like record the whole podcast and then for the like skippy part to be on yours too. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let's try this out. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Sorry, my name and. Um, and I guess your business or what you do or the whole everything. For sure. Um, well, it, my name is Megan Mondrell and I am the founder and lead photographer of Megan Mondrell Photography. We are a, a photo and video team based on Vancouver Island, but we do serve all of Canada. Um, and so the most exciting part, I guess, of my business, adding a lot of team members happened in the last year over the pandemic, um, which was very exciting for me, despite everything that did happen. Um, and then additionally, um, with one of my photography friends, we're starting a education business for photographers. So very cool. Also, uh, and so where did you, what did you do before photography? Yeah. So before photography, um, I kind of got interested in it in high school when my, um, partner at the time was really into photography. Um, and so I was like, you just start a business out of it. Um, I'll help you. And he was not a talker. So I did all of the business side of things and he took the pictures and edited them afterwards. Um, and so that's kind of when my introduction to photography started in high school. Um, I was always very creative and entrepreneurial, but I never thought that I was going to start my own business. Um, out of high school, I went to university for one whole semester <laughs> um, to with the hopes of becoming an OBGYN. But yeah, one semester in, I was like, first of all, this is kind of difficult. You're not learning about anything you're interested in. Like, I like babies and I'm learning about plants. Um, yeah. <laughs> and if I like kids so much, then why am I going to sign up for, you know, over 10 years of schooling and then being in the hospital most of my life? My mom was a nurse and she worked shift work and I didn't always get to see her super often as a kid. So yeah. then I was kind of like, hold on let's not waste any more of my parents' money. Let's not waste my money in the future <laughs> with this. Um, and I decided to see if I could make photography a thing. So I guess to answer your question of what I did before photography, just a bunch of odd jobs and like an intro level work <laughs> at different okay. jobs. Yeah. And so how long have you had the, your photography business? Yeah. So I've had my photography business this is really hard after last year to remember I'm like years aren't a thing anymore. <laughs> I think I've had my business for four years, three okay. years, maybe more officially. Um, and I've been full-time for two years now. Very cool. Yeah. And how was that transition from being a solo business person to hiring people? How did that kind of come to you? Yeah. So it all kind of started with the fact that I realized the effect that 2020 was going to have on my business. Um, cause it could have gone 
a couple of different ways, but back <laughs> March last year, I thought that the biggest issue would be the fact that I would have too many weddings this year because all of the weddings from last year were moved to this year and people would still book this year. Little did I know it was going to continue, but yeah. Oh, well. Um, so it was important to me that I could still be able to serve my couples and not be stressed and still have a good family life and um, social life and mental health. So, and then the other side of it too, was that I realized that lots of artists were in the same place where they weren't able to work and they weren't able to book new jobs um, and they aren't interested in the business aspect of things. So I wanted to, on the flip side, extend a little bit of a helping hand, I guess you could say to other photographers who um, could use a little bit of supplemental income instead of like going, getting a job at Walmart or McDonald's, for instance. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And I'm curious how you guys, how do you serve all of Canada? How yeah. So I lived in Calgary for a little bit before COVID hit and I moved back to the Island um, where I grew up just to be with family and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, so I have a little bit of a client base there as well as connections. One of the, one of our videographers is based in Calgary. Um, and while I was in Calgary, I also met a photographer who what like came out um I guess just to see the mountains and take some photos there but she actually lives in Toronto so um we have a couple of different hometowns for um the different independent contractors and associates on our team but most of the time like we would also just travel and include yeah. that into the prices yeah very cool and where how many places in Canada have you gone so far or is that too so many so far <laughs> So far, um, just basically everywhere in between the island and Drumheller, which is like a little bit past Calgary. Um, yeah, I started most of my traveling journey in 2019. And so then 2020 hit and that was pretty yeah. much <laughs> it for that. But I'm hopeful to be able to um, serve more areas. And I'd love to go out to the East Coast. I feel like that'd be really cool and see like another beach of Canada <laughs> yeah but, I know. I've never yeah. been to the east coast mm -hmm. yeah it looks really nice out there yeah I feel like it's like a very very similar vibe but there are I think yeah. some aspects that are like also very opposite <laughs> yeah it would be really cool to see yeah yeah okay well and then you have a podcast right as mm -hmm. well and is that part of the education part business that you were talking about yeah so that um, side of things that business is called photo business design. Um, and it, I can't take credit for it. It was, <laughs> um, all credit goes to my business partner, uh, Ricky. And so we just started our podcast a couple of months ago. It's pretty new. It's a baby podcast right now, but, um, we basically are just helping photographers, um, create like embody a photo CEO mindset. So that really like turn it, their business from a hobby into an actual legitimate business, um, as far as the logistics go, but also mindset. Mm, okay. Very yeah. cool. And you do like one episode a week or something like that. Yeah. We release new episodes on every Tuesday. Very cool. And do you guys, how do you guys work that? Do you record it on the same week that you're putting it out or do you, have you recorded them ahead of time? Yeah, we do like batch recording on every uh, first Tuesday of the month. Oh, yeah. So we just sit down and we talk for like five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, get into a flow of it and then we're exhausted by the end. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I like to do that as well and do yeah many episodes at once usually. Well, usually maybe two or three a week and then I'm ahead of the game. Exactly. It feels good to be ahead and be prepared. And, um, when then you can just like get yourself into the mood to record instead of, yeah. Like, oh, start that. Yeah. yeah. What, um, what podcast host do you guys use? Do you do the back end of any of it or she does the back end? I think that we use anchor. Um, we started out with, I don't even know what it's called. The Spotify run one. Okay. It, and it like was a back end editing service and it was really bad. <laughs> oh, really? Um, because yeah. they wouldn't give you the link to be able to host it on anywhere other than Spotify. Mm -hmm. And so um, we actually had to delete the podcast <laughs> and re upload it. Oh, so, no. 
So I know that's the thing. Once you have a podcast host, you're kind of stuck with it in or else you have to delete or it's all gone and then have another one, which scares me. I like the one that I'm using. I use Budsprout. Yeah. That's the one I started with, but I also hear that SoundCloud is, I've heard people using SoundCloud and it seems to be good, but I'm happy with Buzzsprout. But if I ever did want to change, I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> I know. Now. I think that you're good as long as you're able to like put it on more than one platform. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Being yeah. stuck on nothing against Spotify. I love it for music, but there's nowhere where people can like leave a review, give any feedback. Right. Um, so that was one of our big things and not everybody uses it. So wanted yeah. it to be a little bit more diverse. Yeah. I like having mine on Apple as well yeah. because there's, it's a pretty big platform. So yeah, I have it. You can put it on there's like 10 platforms that I've put it on. Some of them I haven't even heard of. I don't know, even know if people use them, but it's <laughs> no. on there. So if you want to listen to it. I know. Yeah, yeah. There are some ones where I'm like, really? I didn't even know that Google had one, which I guess makes sense if you have a Android that is run by Google, um, yeah. hosted with Google or whatever. But yeah, I've like never used it. But then if you search up podcasts, I realized that, yeah, I guess you could just listen to it straight from Google. I didn't know that before though. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I guess there's Google phones nowadays too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Phones. I don't know. Well, very cool. That's exciting. And so where so you've expanded a lot this last year. Mm-hmm. And there's are people starting to I, like I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now, kind of yeah. with COVID. They're starting, there's rumors of things opening up and restrictions are easing up a little bit. Our brides hoping that the wedding season will be back on in the summertime and Um, it's interesting like a lot of my couples um this year so far has been better because they have that backup plan already Mm -hmm. so it was easy to kind of transfer over into okay we'll just have as many people are allowed to come but there are some people who like having big families is really important to them. So we are seeing a couple of reschedules to 2022 still. Um, some people are rescheduling just because they're like, you know what? I'm not having a big wedding. Let's do a weekday elopement. Yeah. <laughs> so that's another reason for rescheduling, but I don't mind um, that at all. I don't mind any of them, but um, we're seeing lots of like, I was getting 2023 inquiries in December, which seemed crazy in the future, just because people were like, we for sure want to have like our 120 guest list and we don't want to run into any issues. So um, things are still a little bit up in the air, but personally, I've been finding that this year has been way better with like less uncertainty and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Really. And what kind what made you want to get into weddings more than any other kind of part of photography (laughs) when I first started I like swore I would never get into weddings because I was like there are gonna be really scary (laughs) bridezillas yeah I don't want anything to do with that and it's a lot of a lot of responsibility um which I think is another thing that holds a lot of people back from it but um it was kind of just like happened I realized that I liked um photographing couples because I talk enough for two people so it was awkward with just being one person (laughs) and a little bit stressful with kids because then um yeah sometimes I found that the parents could get I'm like stressed about things. I'm like, it's just a photo shoot. Like, yeah. Okay. okay. So I liked couples. And then out of that, you would get people that are like, do you do weddings? And you're like, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. You kind of follow a couple through the relationship. Exactly. So it just kind of started like that. And I, now I like the rush of it. Like it's nerve wracking, but it's like, it's a good nerve wracking, I guess you could say. So it must be such a long day. Do you, do you, I guess you probably have different hour packages or do you just do all day from the beginning to the end or? We have an all day package, um, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be like 12, 14 hours, but it just means like no stress as far as deciding um, how many hours you need. It's just whenever you're done, then you're done. It's not like there's a cutoff, Um, but basically anything past that four hour mark feels the same on your body. (laughs) After the four hour mark of, um, you know, standing and holding onto a camera in front of you, your back is just like, oh, oh my gosh, which is one of the reasons why I had to upgrade to like a a mirrorless camera because they're so much lighter, but yeah. (laughs) it's, it's a long day for sure. And you need to just be hyped and be okay with not eating very much food or drinking. Much water. <laughs> yeah, no breaks. <laughs> no 
couple breaks. Yeah. <laughs> Got to pee, suck it up. <laughs> Just hold it. Yeah. Is there, um, so when you photograph a wedding, is there, um, multiple like people from your team there or would it just be one or two of you or yeah so it's different per package um for smaller weddings it's definitely not necessary to have more than one person some people like to have videography especially now with having less people coming to weddings um then it's like a little bit to show people afterwards make them feel like they were there yeah um for larger weddings usually there's um a lead photographer and a second photographer just so that you can have more people covering more stuff um for the day and some people like three photographers but that's like only happened once for me (laughs) it's a lot of photographers yeah that is very cool well that's super exciting and I'm glad that your business is keeping on going as well (laughs) with COVID and everything it seems to have gotten better for you so that's awesome yeah. And where is there anything that you're reaching towards now with your business or um, other ventures? Yeah, I think probably what I'm working towards now is having less weddings hands on personally um, and just um, providing more weddings for my team members and focusing a little bit more on the education side of things. Um, just recently, I feel like I've found more of a personal purpose in um, helping other people. And so that can absolutely be done for weddings, capturing those moments for people and like having those like super in the moment memory type photos. Um, But also just with um, helping other photographers kind of find their way, because when you first start in anything, it can be scary, but I feel like photography um, and videography is kind of clicky and people are always just like, oh, don't do it. Or it's very competitive. So, um, people will just try to tell you stuff to discourage you subtly. Uh, it kind of reminds me of high school sometimes, yeah. but I want to be that like photography, big sister to people. That's like, no, you can do it here. Here's my help. Go. <laughs> yeah. That's really awesome that you're wanting to help people and your videos and everything have been really cool on Instagram as well. And, um, just the, just the kind of vibe that you give off, even from your Instagram page when you haven't even, I hadn't even talked to you in person before I could just tell that you were, Like, yeah, you weren't competitive with it. Like when somebody gives off their skills um, publicly, you can tell that they want other people to be good at what they're doing as well. So that's really awesome that you're doing that for everyone. Thanks. Yeah, Yeah. I think that it's like so much um, when you make your business more about you than just like taking nice photos, more like infuse your personality into it, then there's no competition. So you don't really have to worry. You could give someone the exact blueprint that you had and they'll still create a completely different uh, business and they'll be able to serve a completely different client base better than you could. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Are you working on any, so what is this, what is the, is the education business going to be a separate part of it or is it, is it a online thing that people could follow like a guide or something or yeah so the photo business design business is separate from my Megan Mundrell photography business um in previous years I had hosted workshops um for photographers to come to and grab some nice photos have like hours and hours of learning but obviously that's not a super great plan with everything that's happened um and rescheduling stuff like that there's so much planning probably just like a wedding (laughs) it sucks to reschedule so yeah (laughs) Um, yeah, the photo business design stuff will be all hosted online. Um, and we're creating courses and, um, different coaching materials for people. Very cool. Yeah. Do you set up like zoom calls or something with people that you could, they could ask you about their photography struggles or anything like that yet? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, back under, this is getting confusing, jumping back and forth, (laughs) Um, We have hopes to do group coaching calls um, as part of the courses for photo business design, but for my personal business, I do offer like one-on-one mentorship and coaching calls as well. Very cool. Well, that's awesome. And um, I saw on your, I don't know, I guess it was on your photography page. I think I only follow you on one page, but, um, and you were in Topino recently. Was that for your birthday? That's so fun. Yeah, I was in Tofino for the weekend. Um, I got a fairly last minute inquiry for a photo shoot there. And I was like, yeah, why not? I'll just go to Tofino for my birthday. It's not the worst way to spend it. 
that's so fun yeah and then um was it an elopement or a couple or it was just uh like friends get away basically so it's just fun. four four gals um it was fun unfortunately they booked their session in the morning when it was just pouring with rain and then it got colder throughout the day when there was less like clouds but it was sunny just really really windy yeah, yeah. well that's fun that you can go kind of wherever you don't have a a main office kind of thing you can yeah it's definitely one of the pluses for sure is being able to go wherever I'm sure my car has a different viewpoint it's like please stop driving me like from Calgary to Tofino and all the way around but yeah oh my goodness well that's really fun it was definitely nicer when you could comfortably take planes everywhere yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah well hopefully maybe by the end of this year you can travel more and do some other would you do like let's say you're going to I don't know Toronto or whatever and then on this week and then people would book in Toronto like that week for you or um or would you kind of base it on people's needs yeah so um usually it makes most sense just cost wise for people to book travel sessions for weddings um but then when you're out there, you can definitely like put a call out and do no travel sessions. So even if it was, let's say like Tofino's not, you know, a 10 hour drive away, but still decently far. So if I'm up there for a shoot or a wedding, um, and then if anyone else wanted to book a wedding, or maybe I would host a mini session day that day, then that's another way to kind of, um, book in, or if you're a photographer to like host sessions, I guess, for people. Very fun. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, maybe let me get my notebook. One minute. We'll do yeah. a little bit of this walk. I what love your glasses, your... by the way. Oh, thank you. I just got them. They're so, they're very different than what I normally get, but they're very they're fun professional but still funky you know totally I know I wasn't even thinking about getting them but the gl- the lady at the glasses store was like try these on and I was like on the thing I was like no I wouldn't wear those <laughs> they're super nice I like yeah. that usually I just have like black frames and it's like boring but yeah change it up very exactly. fun well what's your typical work day like it's probably very different every day but uh, what do you do every day yeah. My typical work day, I try to keep a little bit of a schedule. Um, even though my personality type does not like schedules, um, it's just proven that that's just what works best for people. <laughs> it's good to have a routine um, and in order to have a little bit of consistency. So um, one of the nice things about what I do is I can wake up whenever I want, which I still do set an alarm. So I'm not sleeping in because I could sleep in for forever. But um, I usually wake up at around like 830 do my like iPhone work in bed. So messaging back and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not a morning person at all, (laughs) but then I, uh, hop into the office and I usually do like very time sensitive things first, um, which are also usually the more boring things. (laughs) Um, just, uh, like responding to emails, doing any like bookkeeping stuff. Um, yeah, all of the like really technical business things in the morning. And then later on the day is when I allow myself to get a little bit more creative. Um, when I do a bit more like brainstorming on new ideas as far as either business or like photo shoot wise. Um, and when I do a bit more of the like, photo editing or like website updating, that kind of stuff. So it does change day to day, but I still try to keep it a little bit, a um, little bit of a routine as far as when I start and when I finish. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, on Thursdays are usually my meeting days. And then first Tuesday of the month is podcast day. (laughs) Very fun. Yeah. Very fun. Um, what's your favorite and least favorite thing about your job? Hmm. That's a good question. I think that my favorite thing about what I do is that I can create anything I want, which Mm -hmm. is 
to a degree, like it's possible for anyone to create the life that they want and the future that they want. Um, but it is a little bit harder when you're working for someone else. <laughs> when yeah. you work for yourself, you can seriously pivot, take any kind of direction change that you want um, and do what makes most sense for you in your life. And so that's what is my favorite thing. Um, I think probably my least favorite thing, even though it's gotten better because I've gotten really quick at it, it's probably editing. <laughs> yeah. Editing of photos. Yeah. Editing yeah. photos. Um, it's fun at first, but then it like, you know, you have to do your second or third pass through the photos and you're like, okay, this is getting a little bit old, <laughs> but luckily it is something that you're able to outsource. There are people whose job is just to edit photos. So right. that's something that I'm looking into this summer or next summer, just depending on how busy this summer turns out to be with possible reschedules and all that kind of stuff. But right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, what is a career highlight that you're most proud of? Hmm. Good question. Shoot. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm proud of a lot of things with my photography business. Um, I'm definitely like grateful for a lot of the things that I've been able to accomplish so mm -hmm. early in life. Um, my biggest accomplishment. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to pick one. I'm like, I guess I could just say like one of the times I've been published, but I think it's probably this past year when I took the leap to take on other people on my team, because it's not something that a lot of people do. Um, and so it was like very uncharted territory, not very many people to ask. And there have been its ups and definite downs to having other people that you have to manage. Um, but I think that it's probably one of the things I'm most proud of and biggest steps as far as what can create um, the best outcome for me, I guess. Yeah. So and for everybody else involved. Business. But yeah, yeah it's like it's, it's definitely the bigger step to take it from like a, a small business platform to a, a bigger business platform to be able to like impact more people and um, give myself a little bit more freedom, hopefully. Mm -hmm. eventually <laughs> take some weight off of your shoulders right yeah yeah very cool okay and are you have you always worked from home um before like, covid would you work from home mostly other than going to the shoots and all that yeah, or is yeah. that new from covid usually i would work from home yeah. um i used to do most of my meetings in in person at coffee shops that's probably the only other thing um but yeah, it was so cold in Calgary. I didn't leave the house if I didn't need to. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I'm an extrovert, but I'm very much a homebody. And so I think another reason why I was able to um, do what I did last year is just because it worked well with me. Like I didn't mind being home mm -hmm. and I didn't mind um, having a little bit of extra time to do like my creative stuff. So I think so much in life comes down to mindset. And so I just got lucky, I guess, and had a um, a, a good mindset last year, which lots of stuff came out of, I guess, but yeah. Cool. And do you find it hard when you're working from home to kind of separate when it's time to stop working and, and time to, for your evening to start or your weekend to start? Yeah, definitely. And I think that it's not even so much working from home. I just think that it's when you have your own business, it's really yeah. easy to let things mold together because a lot of the time it, it makes you happy <laughs> and a lot yeah. of entrepreneurs are workaholics um but it definitely was a bit more of an issue when I did have a full-time job on top of my photography business mm -hmm. because I would think of my like editing hours or my business hours in the evening as leisure time so I would have YouTube or Netflix on at the same time and so I think that that really first of all not productive at all <laughs> <laughs> even though lots of people do it um but Second of all, it would just mean that I would spend like another eight hours doing photography stuff after work, um, which could have been boiled down into like an hour or two hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I could have focused. had, yeah, actually like focused, um, relaxing time as well, but yeah. Um, yeah, well, I think it's, I don't, I don't usually work from home. I can if some days if I want to, but even when I do work from home, I'm not productive because I, unless I have like a major project to do a yeah. certain thing to focus on, then I'll, 
I get so distracted at home. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know, working from home is not really for me. <laughs> it's, it's really common. And I think that it's just that you, you never had to do that at any point in your life, like yeah. you go to school and someone's keeping you on track for you or you're in work and people are kind of like looking over your shoulder and making sure that you're staying on track. Yeah. And so then you're, you know, you're home with all the things you like and enjoy and all of your distractions. And so it's really easy to get distracted and like, think, you know, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, the best that I can. Like, yeah, I thought that I was working so hard before. Um, but now I realize that I'm like, I actually have free time during my day. <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah, and it's just fun. like all about making a decision to do something. And it's like, it, everyone thinks that having a routine and being consistent is like a cage and it's not fun and it's, um, taking freedom away. But I think that by having more discipline with yourself and having that routine, it gives you more freedom because you're not half thinking and half worrying about seven different things that you're supposed to be doing, but like, Oh no, I'm just gonna, just gonna hang out here yeah. and worry about it <laughs> and worry about it. <laughs> and you were talking about being published. Where have you been published? Um, I've been published. My first publishing was Femme Rebel Magazine, which is a UK magazine, um, Today's Bride, Rocky Mountain Bride, Confetti Magazine, um, West Coast Weddings, Love Inc., um, Creators Mag. And for all of those, do you submit if they have an opportunity or did they find you or how does that work? Um, so most of those um, magazines you submit to them. Um, and then once you submit once, sometimes you can make a good relationship with the editor and they can contact you if they're looking for, um, certain things. Um, but usually how it happens in at least the wedding world, um, you submit photos and then they, yeah, go through them and decide if they want to put them on their website or magazine. Um, and then I think more so for the, um, like fashion photography realm, sometimes you have to pay to get published, which I don't know if I necessarily agree with, but yeah. luckily you don't see that a whole lot in the wedding industry. <laughs> but Very yeah, cool. that's exciting. And then when you're published, do they let you know that you're being published or get an email or something? Yeah. So um, I guess an important thing to point out as well with the whole fact that um, sometimes you have to pay to be published is that is it looks nice and it does feel nice, but it's also like, if you're starting out and you're a photographer, don't feel like you have to be published to be like recognized or anything like that. Right. Because um, even the photographer that you really look up to could have paid lots of money to <laughs> be published in whatever magazine they were published in. But yeah, yeah usually you submit it, um, at least for the wedding industry, you submit your photos, the little bit of a story from the day, um, all the vendors that were involved, and then they contact you with either like a yes or a no. Um, and then they give you a time frame when it's expected to be published. Um, and then you usually get an email with like a little badge you can put on your website when it has been released. And then usually there's also like an exclusivity cause. So you can't, um, you can't let anyone else publish it for a certain amount of time. So they definitely do like notify you about that kind of stuff when it is published. Well, that's a big accomplishment. That's really nice. They yeah. So many magazines and, <laughs> and they, you've submitted all and they chose your work, right? So that's it's definitely exciting. And it's fun to like go around and collect your badges. <laughs> yeah. And then for you put them on your website and did you make your website or did you get somebody to make a website for you? <laughs> Hopefully one day someone else can make my website for me. Um, <laughs> I made my website. I started on Squarespace and then I switched over to show it just because it like works a little bit better with SEO, um, search engine optimization, and it's a little bit more customizable. But the problem with me is like customizable means you put everything that you like on there. And I like so many different <laughs> styles and colors. And so it's yeah. just like this big mess. So <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to have somebody to like put all my ideas through and then them filter it into this like nice cohesive website. But for now it's just a big loud website. <laughs> That's fun though. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, why don't we do a, should we, let, we'll do a this or that. Ooh, this or that. It all off. Okay. So cookies or cake? Cookies. Cat or dog? like both 
Okay. Oh, probably cat because I have lots of them. <laughs> Do day or night? Um, I guess night. I think I'm pretty productive in night, at night time. Text or call? Text. Eat out or cook at home? <laughs> Eat out. <laughs> Not a chef. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice home or nice or sorry, nice car or nice home interior. Mm. Home interior. Yeah. Um, shower or bath? Shower. Makeup or no makeup? No makeup. <laughs> Passive or aggressive? Aggressive. <laughs> really? Um, gold or silver? Um, gold. Rain or sun? Sun. <laughs> um, bare feet or shoes? Bare feet. City or country? Country. Tattoos or piercings? Tattoos. Cold or hot? hot. I don't know what that's pertaining to, but in general. <laughs> Probably hot. Jeans <laughs> or leggings? Pardon? Jeans or leggings? Oh, no question. Just leggings. <laughs> um, lefty or righty? Lefty. Online shopping or in store? Probably in store. Salt, salty or sweet? Both. <laughs> Together? Yes. Um, breakfast or dinner? Both. I like all food. <laughs> yeah. Um, boat or plane? Plane. Cooking or cleaning? Cleaning. Earrings or necklace? Earrings. Christmas or your birthday? Christmas. <laughs> Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Um, the left side of the bed or the right side of the bed? <laughs> I don't know if that means facing the bed or when you're in the bed. In the bed. Um, yeah, in the bed, right side, facing it, left side. <laughs> okay. Um, swimming pool or lake? Swimming pool. Apple or Android? Apple. Yeah. For sure. All right. Well, that's so fun. <laughs> and you, you're in Sydney, right? That's your home base. Yeah. Yeah. Or Saanich area. Saanich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And that's where you grew up, right? Um, grew up. Yeah. More like central, not central Saanich, but in Saanich area, yeah. um, closer to Victoria and then moved out to North Saanich. Yeah. Later in life. Fun yeah well thanks for being on my podcast thanks for having me it was a ton of fun yeah and I'll be in touch when it's gonna come out for sure let me know and okay. give me any materials you want me to post <laughs> okay awesome all right well have a good evening you as well okay bye bye